Hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to my backyard. And uh, something that I've kind of made up my mind I'm going to do. I don't know how long it's going to take or whatever. But I thought I'd read the Bible to you. Like I said, we're going to go book by book. And we're just going to read maybe a chapter a day. It won't be long. Um, and I hope it's a blessing to you, you know. For those of you who may be wondering or would like to follow along, I will be reading the King James Version, you know, so I won't have any problems with the copyright Gestapo <laughs> with the modern version. So but I think what I'll do is I'm going to just just do one, an Old Testament and a new, old, new, old, new, that way. And just kind of, you know, have some variety, not, you know, just go through the entire Old Testament in one clip, just kind of break it up just and I thought we'd start in the, the Gospel of John today and uh, before we do um, and I'm reading this out of the Thompson Chain Reference Bible King James Version there's a little uh, section back here called Principles of Bible Study by the author of the Chain Reference System so that'd be Reverend Thompson Frank Charles Thompson, DD slash P, I mean, comma PhD, and this is published by BB Kirkbride Bible Company of Indianapolis, Indiana, USA. So, I'm going to read this, it's just a few paragraphs. The spiritual attitude indispensable. It is of the utmost importance that the reader or student should approach the Bible in a reverent attitude of mind regarding it as the inspired word of God and not as an ordinary literary production. It may be read or studied in the same spirit as a volume of Milton, Shakespeare, or some historical work, and it will be found interesting and profitable. But the merely literary student or critic, however scholarly and persistent he may be, will never discover its choicest treasures because he has an extinguisher on his light. Paul says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Conscious need essential. The Bible should be studied as eagerly as a hungry man seeks for bread. The formal reading of a portion of the word each day may have some value as a religious exercise, but in order that the full benefit may be received from its truths, they must be appropriated to personal needs. The delivery man on a baker's wagon may handle a thousand loaves of bread a day and yet go home hungry at night. So the Bible reader may pursue large portions of the Word of God with little profit unless he makes his own by personal appropriation and feeds upon it. First hand knowledge best. Many Christians are satisfied to receive all their truths filtered through the mind of some teacher, minister, or commentator, seldom or never going to the book of books for independent study. They inevitably become mere echoes of the opinion of others. They are not grounded in the truth, hence they are liable to be carried about with every wind of doctrine. It is a great day for a little child when he learns to feed himself, so it becomes a new era in a believer's life when he forms the habit of going daily to the original sources of spiritual truth for his own personal nourishment. Study the Bible as a traveler who seeks to obtain a thorough and experimental knowledge of new country. Go over its vast fields of truth, descend into its valleys, climb its mountains of vision, follow its streams of inspiration, enter its halls of instruction, give us wondrous portrait galleries visit its wondrous portrait galleries. Remember that many doctrinal errors have grown out of a lack of spiritual perspective or a narrow view of scriptural truth. The Savior says, Ye do err, not knowing scriptures, nor the power of God. And then finally, seek to understand the deep things of God. Study the word as a miner digs for gold, 
or as a diver plunges into the depths of the sea for pearls. Most great truths do not lie upon the surface. They must be brought up into the light by patient toil. And that's called Principles of Bible Study. If you have a uh, Thompson Chain reference, King James Version, it's on page 1,326. That's, that's some good, good words about God's Word. So today, we're going to begin in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many received, as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of, man, of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and walked among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness to him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is the, in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed, and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou all that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And he went, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye not know. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore I am come baptizing with water. And John bare a record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode on him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again the next day after John stood, and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. 
And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interrupt, be interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is, by interpretation, a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael come unto him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the, your word, your written word, that we can turn in and see what you have to say to us through this lost generation. I pray that they repent of their sins and turn to you, the only true God, the only Messiah. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. And thank you for this small audience on YouTube that's turning in to hear your word read. In Christ's name and for his sake, I pray. Amen. Thank you.